Well, hello there, humans, if you're earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm going to have a look at the Thunder, the Tier 6 Heavy that recently popped up in-game for the first time. And it's not a groundbreaking concept tank. In fact, it's a tank that looks a hell of a lot like the Tier 6 Russian Heavy that's already in the game, the KV-1S. And that's because it really is the KV-1S, but just with bits. And, I mean, that's fair enough. The KV-1S with bits is still the KV-1S with bits, and you'd rather have some bits than not have some bits. So, in a really unsurprising... Uh, well, look, it's a tech tree tank that's been upgraded, and it's better than a tech tree tank, because it has 10 degrees of gun depression. It also looks crazy good. Like, have a look at it, as it screams along in a tier 6 game with the <laughs> the star, the Russian star on the side, and the uh, the flaming red electrical looking stuff coming off like some kind of Scarlet Witch enhancement. How much difference does two degrees of gun depression make? Well, it makes a whole hell of a lot of difference. Two degrees of gun depression is the difference between exposing what is a relatively weak upper plate area, upper glacis, uh, and not exposing that. It's a difference between exposing what is a, well, relatively weak hatch and not exposing that relatively weak hatch. Two degrees of gun depression is, for me, the difference between the Thunder being a good tank and being a really cool tank. Um, the KV-1S does have, in my opinion, a slightly better armor profile. Uh, just in terms of the hatch itself, you're looking at 104 millimeters for the KV-1S and, sorry, 146 millimeters for the KV-1S or up to 143 millimeters for the KV-1S and around about 104 millimeters for the Thunder. So it does have a weaker hatch, but once you get that thing right up in the air, it's super hard to hit. It's also got the hallmark of the KV-1s and the IS series of tanks in that it's got a, a fairly solid top end uh, to it. it. You can be forgiven for feeling like you're moving quite a pacey bloody tank. It does 43 kilometers an hour once you get it up to that. But the Thunder is slightly under the KV-1S in terms of horsepower, 550 versus 660, which does mean it's not going to be that crackerjack in that department. What I love about it is it's just a great looking tank with 10 degrees of gun depression. And anytime you get a tank with 10, degree, 10 degrees of gun depression, you're going to be happy. And it, it gives the Thunder an element that the 1S doesn't quite have. The eight degrees that the KV-1S can get up to is all well and good. But when you can stick it to 10, you can be both a side-scraping peekaboom tank, which the Thunder can quite comfortably fulfill at a tier where it sees a whole lot of low pen vehicles or you can do the good old gun depression like this and get shots that just wouldn't normally be available the gun is typically typically russian though don't don't go out on a limb and start thinking that you're going to be like a t110e5 here with uh you know although the t110e5 hat tip has eight degrees of gun depression no you're you're all about basically using a very russian gun in a very derpy manner a 122 millimeter gun, in fact, which is quite rare at this tier. You don't get nearly as many 400 alpha guns at tier six as you do at tier seven and even, you know, tier eight and up, it's, it's really starting to cook. And that means you can make a lot of, uh, a lot of bad guys pay. And there's gonna be some shots you see here that really do pay, t you know, it's a, a gun depression tank, which is weird to say for a Russian tank. I mean, we all know the American line has a whole slew of really good gun depression heavies, like the T-32, the T-34, um, the T-26, uh, the, you know, the, the Goose and the E-5, or the M-103. Like, it's kind of built on that. How lame is that? I didn't want to waste, because I didn't want to waste my shot, my 400 alpha shot on that M-4. I was expecting someone else to do it. Yeah, and expecting someone else to do anything in Blitz is a crazy concept. 
So what you end up with is a tank that has a lot of positive things going for it. What it doesn't have going for it is DPM. The DPM is god awful. It is 100% still much like the KV-1S, a peekaboom tank, whether it is in a gun depression peekaboom mode or a side scraping peekaboom mode. 1357 DPM versus, say, the ARL 44s, which tops out at 2K, the Churchill Mark 6, which will, again will give you 2072, 2072, a, a TOG will give you 2111. And the gun handling is, you know, 0.417 as a baseline, if you're wondering. Is not good. How about this good guy, um, BDGR here? Like, just goes and shoves his booty right in front of this guy, and he can't quite kill me, and allows me to farm out that last little extra bit of damage. Well done, that guy. Good guy, BD. Good guy, BD. And then we, you know, showcase the last little bit of damage here as we uh, cruise on to the top and tap out the SU-100 with a big 403 high roll. Well, kind of an average roll, but still, it was more than 400, which is good in any man's language. You don't have a whole lot to worry about with this tank in terms of playability. It's pretty plug and play. It is exactly what is on the box. There's no surprises with this little number. Uh, but it is a legitimate heavy. It will side scrape, and it has enough armor on it to be a worry for same tier and lower tier tanks. And I really enjoy that about it. I think that's a, a wonderful thing, and you can see... There's a trait, 160 odd for 400 odd. And that's the kind of things you want to be doing with the Thunder. You want to be trading uh, little pew pew guns like that Stuggies for big boom boom guns like your 122. And that allows you to really negate the DPM uh, disadvantage that you have compared to pretty much every other tank in your tier. And it's a proven playstyle. It's a thing that'll work and work and work and work all the way through to T10. It's also great, a great thing. And it's a, this is a great tank to practice that playstyle. The KV-1S, uh, geez, it used to be such a big bopper. It used to be a tank that really did instill fear and a lot, you know, along with the IS and all these heavy buffs that are happening and, and you know, attempting to move things back. The power creep that is real in Blitz. Like, how big is the power creep? It's crazy. Cell and power will do that. Like, but 10 degrees of gun depression is, you know, going to get me across the line every day. Where have I been? Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking. I've been incredibly busy with the contracts and such that I've got for PUBG Mobile. And this shot, seriously, dude, what are you thinking? And that other channel's just gone over 100,000 subs. Um, and that's been really, really busy. So I'm going to keep posting content here on the Blitz channel, but it's not going to be as frequent as it used to be. I just, something's got to give. Is it family? Is it time? Is it, you know, at the end of the day, it's very, very difficult to make a living and please everyone at the same time in terms of content creation. I've tried for a very long time, but it's been difficult this past couple of months with COVID, all the family logged in together and, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going anywhere though. I'm not going to stop playing Blitz and I'm not going to stop posting Blitz videos. I just won't be posting as regularly as I did back in the day when it was a video every single freaking day. Um, anyway, love you guys. I'm not, not leaving. I'm still around. For those of you who think that I've vanished and I don't play Blitz anymore, uh, look after yourselves. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.